The DRDO's Combat Vehicles Research and Development Establishment is ready with the prototype of 1,500 horsepower engine for the DRDO's next generation main battle tank, that will be offered to the Indian Army under the 1,700 FRCV program, and this engine will also be available if the Army chooses a foreign next generation main battle tank design. The CVRD has also developed a prototype of a 600 horsepower engine that will be used in 350 light battle tanks and in the TAT orchestral armored personnel carrier. The engine division of CVRD is now looking out for private sector companies for mass production of these engines. Hindustan Aeronautics and Rolls-Royce have signed an agreement to manufacture the Ador engine parts in India, and the agreement includes the first order for supply of spares for the Ador global supply chain. HAL is only the first supplier that has signed a contract, and Rolls-Royce is close to complete discussions with a mix of public and private firms for establishing an entire supply chain ecosystem in India, that will serve multiple Ador engine variants that are in service in India, Southeast Asia and Western countries such as the US and UK. Rolls-Royce and DRDO are moving closer towards completion of the first technical feasibility studies for the joint development of a next-generation 110 kN class engine for the AMCA Mark II. If the evaluation comes in favor of the engine development program and a work share model is found to be feasible, a formal agreement between the two sides could be signed by June or July 2022, that will lay out the partnership terms including transfer of intellectual property rights. The proposed core section of the engine will have a growth potential of 20% in increased thrust generation with minor changes in the core section, that will make it future-proof with 132 kN thrust. The first engine will be ready in at least 7 to 8 years from the signing of agreement in mid-2022. India will sign the $2.5 billion contract for 56 C-295 aircraft for the Indian Air Force early next month, and apart from six aircraft for Indian Coast Guard, the Navy is also looking at the C-295 as a platform to mount the DRDO-developed multi-mission maritime aircraft suite, and the potential orders for the C-295 could reach a three-figure mark in the next two decades if the aircraft is also selected as a replacement for a N-32. The maintenance repair and operations facility by Tartu Advanced Systems Limited will remain operational for all the regional operators in South Asia, even after it has delivered all the aircraft ordered by the Indian Armed Forces. The C-295 can be used for various other applications in the future, and will also create the necessary infrastructure for the development of the indigenous transporter in the long term. A task force headed by Chief of Defence Staff will track the implementation of a set of directives by Prime Minister Modi, that includes drafting a doctrine for non-contact warfare, reforming public sector units in defence, and hand-holding the domestic defence industry. Non-contact warfare comprises all non-kinetic forms, including those related to information cyberspace and psychological domains, even though the military aspect of such warfare could involve drones and loitering munitions. The Indian Army and the Kerala Police have expressed interest in a startup company named Ozark Technologies, that manufactures the first of its kind thermal imaging surveillance units in the state. The armed forces are interested in the Panther Thermal Weapon Site, which is a lightweight and ergonomically designed all-weather and all-train system that makes night vision better than day conditions. It comes with three lens options enabling detection ranging from 1 km to 2.2 km. After intelligence inputs that some employees are willfully communicating classified defense secrets to foreign agents, the Odisha police has arrested four contractual employees of DRDO's integrated test range in Balasore district, for passing classified information to suspected Pakistani agents, and they were getting monetary benefits in return. 
the Cochin shipyard has received a threat email, which is the third such threatening email received by the shipyard in the past four weeks. The shipyard officials have handed over the email to CISF officials, and currently the Kochi police is seeking the help of the cyber wing, and the officials are confident of zeroing down on the sender of the mail. Oh, Mark, drop it.